Hello everybody and welcome once again to Danny and Sons Real Tech Mod Pack. Of course, that's first things first, we've got to look at these bees because it's getting cold as you can see. <laughs> very cold I think, so I've probably not got very much time to do this, so let's have a quick look at these. So we've been doing, if I can get through, no, wrong thing, I can't get it, it's too much snow in the way. <laughs> let's get out of this way. So we're trying to get these into common, to be common bees, aren't we? So let's have a look at this one. That's a pure meadows, brilliant, no progress whatsoever, that's a forest meadows. And that's a Meadows Forest. Fantastic. <laughs> so we'll put those two there. We're going to get a pure forest from the from the box and carry on and hopefully next time we get a bit more luck. As you can see, this crossbreeding is actually not so straightforward. I was thinking it was probably easier than it is being at the moment, but it's actually being difficult. So I'll leave those to do the thing. And last episode I covered the Alvary, but I hadn't realised that the some of the components in the Alvary are actually not related to um, forestry, but they're related to extra bees. So the light one, and also the uh, frame housings are all to do with extra bees. So as you can see, it's about to get very cold on me, and I'm going to have to go inside. That's doing my rural bee. I have actually made a little bit of progress. I've got a rural princess here, so. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to have a look at the kitchen that we did last time. Well, just before I went off and did the ocean monument. So I went over there because it's hot, so warm up a bit. We're going to go through the nether now, so I should get my shuriken in hand in case. And we're going to come to the new base. I don't think this episode is going to be very long as it happens. If I put that on control, I'll go a bit faster. I haven't been here for a while. I haven't taken this path for a while, but uh, normally I cut it off, don't I? But I'll have to decide to take, leave it in today. It's almost as fast as doing the episode. But I think I need to be facing yeah, south. And you come straight out. Oh, of course, it's snowing here as well. It's not got so much snow, of course, because I wasn't here in this uh, biome. So here we have a door, <laughs> double door actually. Which we can go in. So here's the room I've been building and I've been playing around with this a little bit to see what how things work and how these things work. They're actually cheap. These, well this is a, a glazed terracotta. They're pretty difficult actually to set up. I, was, I think they're mostly designed to be put on the ground but I'll just knock it down and show you what I was doing. So I think you have to put it down, for example, to do it what I just did then. You put down one piece, you come across the side here, you put down another piece, you go onto the top of it, you put down a third piece, and then you can go on the back of this and then press the fourth piece and you've got the, the pattern like that. Or if you go to the other side, like that. So if we're doing that for walls, it's going to be pretty tough. Because <laughs> you've got to make a big space. So I was playing with this. So here's the kitchen now. It's built, as you can see. So it's a little galley kitchen. Um, and I've used the, the kitchen floor tiles from cooking with blockheads. Um, on the roof here, I've just got some slate tiles from rustic and some more, a stripe of these going through the through the kitchen and we've got the units so i've got a shelf here with the two books on it i don't think they're needed as it happens and here i've got a kitchen counter um just a second i'll come back in a sweet second i was just turning off the waypoint so got a cutting board we've got a kitchen sink and we've got a little counter to go out in there and then we've got some bits and pieces so i've got some food in here so like cotton and things i need actually it's straight enough almost everything is for i was even surprised i got i got four bones and they actually make stock so oh yeah so almost everything is useful in here that's a backpack i can pick that up now i think because it i emptied it out and here we've got some stuff on here so i've got some dried soup and some apple juice <laughs> and the fruit roll is very full as you can see not that I'm sure that all of these fruits, I don't think olives are, well, there may be, but I don't think we can use that. And they've got some stuff in the fridge. Now, what we're going to look at with these are these three things. Oops, I have to do that with an empty hand, don't I? Because otherwise it doesn't work. So that's a preservation chamber, and that's an ice unit. So that provides snow and ice recipes, and this one prevents the last item from being used up. Interesting. And this one here is the oven upgrade. So this one is basically oven upgrade allows heat so we can right click this and then you see that it's actually already turned on because it should have some power behind that to 
food and chicken in a second. So that's now great. So that's now a powered driven oven. For now, it opens it every time I right click it. So let's try these. I haven't tried this yet either. So a, fr a fridge upgrade preservation. Let's try that. So what's that done to it? Okay, nothing obvious. And the next one is an ice unit. Let's try that down there. Oh yes, we got <laughs> an ice unit in here now. Does it look any different? I don't think so. I think it looks about the same, <laughs> except for this bit at the front. So now we can have a look at the cooking table and see what we can actually do. If it is actually giving me any more recipes, there are some good ones. Stuffed chili peppers. That's a pretty good one. Let's make one of those, shall we? So we needed some cheese chili pepper, which of course I've got from Pam's Harvest Craft. I wonder if there's an alternative recipe for that because we got chili peppers, of course, from the uh, from rustic. Some mutton, some meat, basically onions, spice leaf, and a big one. So next time I get hungry, I'll use this one because what's it got in it? it? Tells me actually it doesn't tell me I've got that much. I'm surprised because this one here tells me I've got grain. Because if I look at my um, status or stats at the moment, grain is still a bit on the low side. There is right at the top, of course, because you just drink milk and you can drink it till the cows come home, so to speak. So in here, I've got the power. Now that should be connected in. Now I'm pretty sure this is powered up. So look, it's got uh, 3.3. That's 10,000. It's, it's fully powered, isn't it? That's connected to the electric furnace. So that's as you can see. It's got nothing in it at the moment, but. I'm just wondering if there's anything I could cook. Um, but this should be connected down here. I don't know why it's not working. Let's just break this connection off here. And then put that back down again. That's a bit awkward, of course, because we've got to go down a block. Um, so I've got a connect, an electric connector there and a connection on here on that set to input and this was set to the output so I just put this connector back in again I've got to go and get a cable of course because I forgot to bring the cable with me and then I can link those two together let's go and do that it might be that it just needs initialization type things take one of those up to there my bits and pieces for playing with building which I don't do very much of I've got to be honest with you so let's just connect this one to there, that's already connected up. Now, has that made any difference? The, oh yes, look, it's already connected. It's fully powered now. So these are actually light, stone lights from Ferdinand's flowers. <laughs> Very strangely, they're a different colour. I don't ask me why, because they shouldn't be really. And this is a treated wooden door. Same as the front door is there, but just really different. And this is another one as well. So now that should be, yeah, that's better. So we should actually be able to cook something on this one now, if it's got the recipes. Um, does it give us any more recipes down here? Yes, look, we've got a tomato herb chicken. It's not actually giving me quite as much as the other stuff, but uh, vegetable soup's quite a good one, isn't it? Vegetables and grain tater tots. I think I've got some tater tots. Taffy food, but some of these ones don't actually seem to have nutrients whether that's actually the case or not, I, to be honest with you, I don't know. Well, this one, veggie strips, is a good one. We'll take some veggie strips with us. So we've got all of these ingredients, salt, peppers. What was the other thing that was in there? Oh, you can click on this one, can't you? Artichokes, mustard seeds, yes, all of that stuff. Right, that's it for this. I don't think there's anything else of interest. Is it night time? Yes, it's night time. I shall come back in a second. That was a little snooze as it went. Because this is actually a bit dangerous. Let me double check this because I've got no real mob protection around here at all. So there's a chance of bit mobs being around here. What I have managed to do is to crossbreed another um, tropical bee. So I've got another tropical queen and she's actually breeding now. So there should be some. I was crossing it with a wintry one. So I was moving this bee from here to the winter hive over the other side there crossbreeding that so we should have some comb don't get very much comb because I haven't got any um, frames in there you do need the frames to get that working properly I'm having a quick look at my temperature this was the one I was using to crossbreed that bee there and over here I've got another one which is just running all the time and that should give us some 
produce. We've got a little bit of produce here. Right, I shall see you back at base. Let's... Right, here we are, back at base. So the last thing we look at today, because it's going to be a fairly short episode, next time I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing. I think we'll have to have a look at some of the transport systems, I guess. Because I want to look at this. This is my concrete making machine. It doesn't actually make concrete, but it does help me make some. So if I get my pickaxe out of here, which one I want is this one, the cheap one. I'll have a look at it. So what this is, with all the snow on top of it, this is a dispenser. And inside this dispenser I've got some red and red cotton uh, concrete powder. Doesn't matter what colour it is, of course. And then here I've got a piston with a sticky piston. On the sticky piston I've got a block. As it happens, the block is... Oops, what was that? butterfly. Uh, it's one of the pretty butterflies, that's because it's forestry. Um, I just got some red concrete on there. And here behind this I've got a slight delay between the two pist between the two red signals. I've got a clock here. This is a clock. This is a Seth Bling clock. And actually that's what led me to read the uh, automation, redstone automation. I thought this is very big. It's six by six and uses quite a lot of materials. And you can put a number of apples in here and it'll just tick through any item as it happens. I could put some of this stuff pretty um chili peppers in there as well, it would work just as well. So, <laughs> so anyway it counts those through there and it makes a pulse. And when it doesn't send the pulse, this pulse is going to go faster, so it's going to dispense a redstone. Uh it's going to dispense um, some powder before it actually pushes it out. So let's have a look. Let's just turn it on. We should get about one. Now this stuff is actually quite interesting. Uh, concrete. If you look down here, it says three blocks down. The reason it's three blocks down so when I'm harvesting it, I'm not bashing away at the, um, at the floor too much. So let's get this in my hand here and I'll turn it on. And what happens, it pushes it down like that. And this keeps going because there's no more concrete in there, of course. Uh, there's no more, yeah, no more concrete powder in there. You'll see that this block is actually, I can't get down because <laughs> of this. Well, actually, I don't need that anymore, do I? Let's just remove. Oh, well, yes, I probably do need it. And I can't do it. Let's just see if I can remove this without breaking everything. If you look down here, it's basically, it stands on the water. It goes down one block and then turns into concrete. Hopefully I can get out of this as well. <laughs> What's going in is one thing. Could I get out as well? I'll put, that, I'll put that slab back in just in case it is needed. Yeah, I think it probably is, because otherwise it comes up. Actually, let's just try it. Oh, I've got to break this block up first of all. I'm tired to get rid of that. Like that. Um, let's just put in a block into here, so one of these. Yeah, that works just fine. I can leave it like that then, can't I? So, so what then you've got to do is I'll put... Uh, let's, I'm going to break it off. You've got to be fast. So, so basically, let's put all of these in here now. Like that. They're going to come and get dropped in here. And I'm just going to bash them all. Like they come in. Oh, <laughs> well, that's not good. Let's turn it off. I didn't expect that. I have to cover the water. Ah, that's why I need the slab. Yes, fantastic. Right, I'll have to get some more water. <laughs> Give me a second. Well, that's a good. That's a good little example of what not to do, isn't it? And I got one ice cube out of it. Um, and I should have a bucket on with somewhere. Let's look, I've got a bucket in here, so I've, thankfully I've got a bucket in there. Oh, I meant to plant those when I was over the other side as well. Um, never mind, let's do that another time. So let's plant that, that water back in there so that we can then break these away. So I'll use my excavator for that. So we've got a piece of concrete here, so we can break the concrete. Actually, I've got two pieces of concrete now. Maybe even three, as it happens, because they turned to dust before they went through, didn't they? So now I've got no space in my inventory, as usual. Let's just remove some of the comb out of the way. Oh, that's good. That's OK. But what can I do is put that back into here again. And pick up those bits that I dropped down the bottom there. Ah. Oh. 
So of course that water block's not going to freeze, so let's turn this back on again and start bashing away at this. I just simply, I can keep right click holding the mouse button down now, or whatever you want, because that's uh, the reason for that third block down. So you can get concrete fairly fast. And of course, <clears throat> if I didn't have magnetic armor on, we could set up a mechanism for pushing the, the concrete as it breaks out of there. I think that's enough. Let's just turn it off. Oh. Put those bits back into here again. Of course, I've got no space for anything else. Let's shift those into there. So that was this mechanism for you. And <clears throat> one more bit of information. I was talking to the developer, CD4017BE, I think it is, which is actually a chip. CD4017BE, it's actually a CMOS chip, so <laughs> where we are. And he, did, he created some simple clocks, and I, I'll put those in the description of the previous episode, at how these actually work. So all it is, he's doing a simple clock with just a, nine, a not gate, and I had a, a, a diode, I had a, a buffer in it as well to delay it. What he says is the colours of these is actually important. So there's a delay caused. This orange means delay. But I'm not sure what the blue and the red means yet. I'll, I'll let you know when I find out. So. So, that's it for this episode. Short one, as I said. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Anyway, until next time, I wish you all the best. Bye for now. <laughs>